SOD Phase 4 is here. Let's see how we're going to succeed as a survival hunter in Molten Core at level 60. First up is, of course, the stat priority. And we are going to need our hit cap as our top stat priority. That being 9% for hit rating at level 60. The reason we want this exact number, which is technically 8.6, but we'll round it up to 9, is because Molten Core bosses are three levels above our level, and that, therefore, is what we need to guarantee our hits on them. Because, remember, a missed hit does no DPS. Then we have Agility. This is a formidable stat, especially for Hunters. It gives us two ranged attack power, one melee attack power, and a small increase in our chance to critically strike, meaning it's a really fantastic rounded out stat that gives us a lot of bang for our buck. After that would be then standalone attack power and critical strike. Again, agility putting them all into one, making it a lot more be a lot more powerful than just getting the standalone stats. That's why these are in that order. And then after that, just things like stamina that are going to improve our survivability would be the next one down the list. Now, going into the talents, it should be no surprise that most of them are going into the survival tree, of course, with a few then being put into the marksmanship tree at the end. I'm not going to go through these in a granular, minute detail, as I have covered most of this off in my prior videos at level 25, 40, and 50 for phases 1 to 3. If you are still leveling up, maybe it would be a good idea for you to check those out on the playlists on my channel. So, what are some of the exciting and core ones that we are choosing? We're going with Humanoid Slaying, increasing our damage against Humanoids, etc. And then Monster Slaying, increasing damage against things like Beasts, Giants, and Dragonkin. Savage Strikes will increase our Critical Strike chance of Raptor Strike and Mongoose. These are the two abilities we're going to be using quite a lot when we're melee weaving. More on that shortly. We've got Survivalist, massively increasing our total health by 10%. Clever Traps, increasing the duration, etc. of our traps. Sure-footed gives us a 3% in increased chance to hit, and this is included in the 9%. To be very specific here, what I mean by that is that the overall hit chance we need is 9%, and this will cover off 3% of that. Killer Instinct fully increases our critical strike chance. Lightning Reflexes massively increases our agility, and it's one of my favourite talent nodes. And lastly, Wyvern Sting, a new ability we're gaining, a stinging shot that puts the target to sleep, any damage will cancel the effect. When the target wakes up, the sting causes 300 nature damage over 12 seconds. Lastly, going into the few points we are putting into marksmanship, we have efficiency, reducing the mana cost of your shots and stings by 10%. Lethal shots, increasing the critical strike with ranged weapons by 5%. Summon to improved hunter's mark, improving our hunter's mark. And then aim shot and mortal shots. Aim shot is a great new ability we're using in the rotation. It is slow with a three second cast, but quite powerful. So you do need to be standing still to get the most, um, well, to be able to use it at all, really, because you can't use it on the move. Um, but obviously, if there's a fight with a lot of mobility happening, you won't have those three seconds to get it out. So you do need to position yourself quite well. Mortal Shots increases your range critical strike damage bonus by 30%. So all pretty straightforward on the talents and why we're choosing them. Now let's move on to the runes. First off, we've got Lock and Load. The other two runes aren't really that exciting for us. Each time one of your traps is triggered, your next shot will cost no mana and does not incur a cooldown. Now we are a survival hunter and we do something interesting. It's known as Lone Wolf. You deal 40% increased damage of all attacks while you do not have a pet. So we are going solo in survival. In the wrist rune, it's TNT, baby. Increases the damage done by explosive shot and all of your damage traps by 10%. Additionally, the initial damage of explosive trap and the total periodic damage of your immolation trap are increased by 50% of your melee attack power. Really, really good one there. Chimera Shot, you deal 135% weapon damage, refreshing the current sting on your target. Remember, you can only have one sting on your target at a time, like Serpent Sting or Wyvern Sting, etc. And this will refresh that effect. If it is Serpent Sting we're using, for example, it's instantly going to deal 48% of the damage done by our Serpent Sting. We've got Exposed Weakness. Your melee and range criticals increase your attack power by 40% for your current agility for 7 seconds. A fantastic cooldown that we can use. And I would say to use that as much as possible. 
Sniper training, your shot abilities gain 2% increased critical strike chance when you haven't moved for the last two seconds, and it can stack up to five times. Using things like aim shot with this are really, really good. We want to, again, position ourselves really cleverly so that we can make the most of this. Your aim shot at five stacks will then become instant. Absolutely fantastic. Of course, you do have to stand still to get that to that point where it will be instant. While moving, you will lose one stack per second. So you can sort of stutter stutter step to try and kind of like avoid this a bit as well and just be careful on your movement you don't want to be you know whizzing around the room if you don't have to be on the foot we're going for wyvern strike so this is interesting you may have already been thinking and i was wondering if you are why are we going to use wyvern sting um you know when it doesn't seem that good well wyvern strike will actually replace your wyvern sting with wyvern strike funny that a vicious strike dealing 100% weapon damage and causes the target to bleed for damage over time. But it does require you to have the talent slotted. That's why we still have to take it. Resourcefulness on the cloak, reducing the mana cost of your traps and their cooldowns. And then lastly, we're going for the ranged and pole specializations on the rings. Again, helping with our hit chance on there. And then lastly, how are we going to put it together into a rotation? Well, excluding the traps and cooldowns, which we've already gone over, the core simple rotation will just look like this. Serpent Sting, auto shot, chimera shot, auto shot, aim shot, auto shot, multi shot. You're basically weaving in and out of auto shots and abilities in that order. Something else you're also going to want to do is, well, some people like to do, is actually melee weave. So you're going to want to stand at eight yards away from your target. That is the minimum range. You need to be away from your target to actually be able to use ranged attacks. Obviously, we don't want to be too far away or we won't be able to run in and do our melee attacks, which will be Raptor Strike and Flanking Strike. So you can weave these in with your other abilities after your auto shot, quickly run in from eight yards to say three to five yards, depending on the hitbox of the boss you are fighting and use your Raptor and um, Flanking Strike there at that point. And that is how you basically melee weave in a more simplistic explanation. And we're just, again, weaving in those auto shots and auto attacks with our melee weaving and the abilities you see here. And that is it. That is how you're going to play Survival Hunter in SOD this phase. Hopefully this was useful for you. If you need any extra help or you want some more granular detail, feel free to join over on the Patreon where I can help you out one-on-one -on -one if needed. You're also getting access to a lot of behind-the-scenes videos and... You can join our Discord where we have a VIP channel which has loads of really, really kind and helpful members of the community that are there to help as well as me, of course.